Hey, hey, everybody. This is Sorry I Didn't Come With a Filter Podcast. Yeah, yeah, this is your boy coming at you. Another drive, another day, another dollar. It is Tuesday. It's finally no more stormy weather over here in BC. Flooding everywhere. So how's everybody's week going? This is, as I say, Sorry I Didn't Come With a Filter Podcast. So looks like a lot of people are starting to talk about how, uh, the, you know, the Canucks are uh, here in Vancouver. We're looking at, you know, possibly letting go Green or, you know, firing Benning. I don't know which way to look at it because both the teams are doing what they're supposed to. What are you doing? Sorry, I'm still, I'm doing driving people. And I just had an idiot not know where they're going. what it is. So, the Monday Nighter was a pretty interesting game. I didn't get to watch most of it because I was pretty busy due to the whole storm here in BC and all that. It was pretty chaotic, pretty crazy. But on the other hand of everything, Whether they're going through a bad stretch or a rough stretch, you 
boss says go, Lenny and go. As I say, like going into the last night's game, you know, um, with the Rams and 49ers, Monday Nighters, a lot of people were trying to figure out is Odell back up a perfect fit there. As I can see, he was. He was doing everything correctly, he was doing everything right. they do have a pretty hard road to go you know uh, the Washington football team you know again they were talking like today they were talking about it on Good Morning Football and on the radio and all that and I was listening to it Tem you know to take away the Washington football team and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers I don't necessarily think it's timing or age or whatever is catching up to them starting to think that teams are starting to see that okay they're gonna go around the same plays like usual you gotta start changing those plays you know it's just kind of like what i was just saying earlier about the connects might have to just take a different approach and say screw it we're gonna freaking win or lose doesn't matter we're gonna go out there and play our asses off that's kind of how you have to do it with the buccaneers yes the buccaneers are one of the oldest rosters on the NFL's list right now. But again, they're doing alright. They're doing alright. They're not, you know, afraid of 
wrestling aspect today was, you know, from my point of view of yesterday was, we're all kind of sucked. That's all I can really say to that. We're all really just sucked. I just could not get into it last night. As, I, as I'm going to say, I, I flipped between both Raw and the Monday Nighter, and then I got busy, and then I just kind of tossed my hands in the air and said, that's enough. I just couldn't get into it. I know Survivor Series is coming up this this couple of weeks from now. And uh, to tell you honest truth, I'm not really looking forward to it at all whatsoever. It's just, it's nothing really new to me. It's just not a very enjoyable pay-per-view for me to watch. It sucks. But that's my opinion to that. And all that. Sorry about that. I had to take a bit of a pause there just because I was uh, and, uh, and gas for my car. So that's all done. It is what it is. I am uh, happy that it's sunny out, but I can't see what's right now. Hopefully I can get home and just pop out my tires out of my car. It is, uh, again, Tuesday. It's sunny. I don't see a lot of uh, warmth, though. <laughs> it's cold. What I was saying was, uh, you know, the, the football aspect, teams are starting to panic I'm guessing because now it's week 11 you got seven seven weeks left to the NFL season which ones are going to make it which ones aren't well we pretty much know that Detroit Lions aren't going to make it nor are the Dolphins nor are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on that front just because of how poorly they've played I wouldn't say the Lions have played poorly, but they've just been kind of outgunned and outshot on a lot of the games just due to the sheer size and effect of that. They're not a, as effective scoring right now. They need to find some good off we offensive weapons for that team and for Jared Goff to actually really show why he was that good in L.A. Or was it Sean McVay? Who knows? I know I was just talking about pro wrestling and how I wasn't interested in it. Well, tonight is NXT 2.0, so let's see how that works. Again, like, I've kind of really dove off on this pro wrestling aspect. Just after knowing that WWE released a bunch of superstars last month, and then, or the last few months, and then you got Ring of Honor, who was shutting down operations until sometime... 2022 here to refocus and to see where they are. So it's like all elite wrestling is basically an impact wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling or your real big wrestling companies right now. With that 
got Jay what? Jay Lethal there. This, like, I, I'm sorry to say, but it's starting to smell a little bit of a renaissance of an old school Ring of Honor powwow going on over there. You know, you got a lot of guys who used to wrestle at Ring of Honor who are now like EVPs of all you leave pro wrestling. Growing with a lot more. You got Adam Cole there. You got you know, Colt Ben has been there. You have Brian Danielson over there. You have Jim Lethal as I say. You have Fox who are one of the EVPs. Kenny Omega is the EVP. Cody Rhodes is the EVP. <laughs> so it's you got Kazarian there. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe this Wednesday we might get to see maybe the Briscoes or, you know, somebody. Because, as a, you know, if you watch Full Gear, and I think a lot of people did, Jay Lisa was the first of many Ring of Honor stars that are probably going to jump ship over to All Elite Wrestling. It's just how it looks. Wrestling is another hot bed where people could, you know, don't want to be incorporated with another big, big company to go to that one. Because Impact Wrestling has been around for a long time, under like so many different names, but it has been around. It's been around since I think 2001, 2002. Since when WWE did the whole buying of Ted Turner's WCW and ECW. Do I see that changing at any given point now? Why? Impact Wrestling is going to be that um, company that keeps striving for the best. And you know what? For them doing what they're doing right now, it's still pretty damn good. For them to go through the Jarrett family, then the Carter family, and now Anthem Sports and Entertainment that owns Fight Network and several other things, they're doing pretty damn good there for the longevity of how long they've been around. You know, like I'm not gonna question these guys. You know, I I, I did thoroughly enjoy Impact Wrestling when it was starting to itself in the beginning stages and then I kind of fell off of it because it was kind of, you know, like, oh, this looks like another ripoff of WCW. But then everything kind of changed when a lot of the old WCW guys were starting to fade out and you start bringing more of the indie guys in. See, all Elite Wrestling, I love it, but I also hate it. Kind of like how I love WWE, but I also hate them. Because they're going after stars, big stars. And don't get me wrong, big stars does draw you money. But, it can also alienate a lot of your, you know, homegrown fan bases. See, I was there when they first started doing the Dynamite shows. And I was like, oh yes, finally it's... You know, I get my, you know, Canadian version of the Monday Night Wars kind of thing going on. I can watch Raw on Monday, and then you got NXT and All Elite on Wednesday, and then, you know, Impact Thursday, and 
cars have more. Like I know AEW has Elevation Dark and then Dark on due to Monday and Tuesday to lead up to Dynamite. And then you got Rampage on Friday. Yeah. Why don't you, you know, I understand those two shows on YouTube generate a lot of views for AEW and that means a lot more money going into their pocket too. But, you know, something's missing in the wrestling world. And I don't think it's just direct competition. I think it's more... Like, AEW has a lot of creative side. Like, the wrestlers have their own creative input on things. Where WWE... The final say goes through the final man and who's the boss. Final boss of the whole thing, and Vince is the one. I think Vince needs to tap into that again to let the wrestlers do what they were doing free, ruthless aggression. You know, I will always be an advocate for the Attitude Era. You can't redo the Attitude Era, but you can make another Attitude 2.0. Spitfire, off the top. We got social media. As I said earlier, it is it's really in a negative world. When it first being developed, it was a positive, and now it's just a negative thing. But anyways, that's beside the point. That's here and there on that end. But let these guys grow their the brands too. Like you know, Stone Cold has his own brand. Rock has his own brand, like, you know, Dwayne Johnson and Steve Austin both have a brand. Stone Cold, you know, Steve Austin has Stone Cold, and the Broken Skull stuff, and then you got The Rock with his, you know, Dwayne Johnson doing his movies, but everybody will always remember The Rock being a pro wrestler before they remember him as a movie star. With that all being said, MLB free agency coming up, and I see the Dodgers land for Noah S S uh, Syndergaard. That's not good. that's not a bad idea. I just hope they retain Clayton Kershaw. To the Clayton Kershaw has been your your stone, your rock, your centerpiece of that entire organization. The big red Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, Cody Seager. You know, all these guys. So I hope, you know, Clayton stays in that rotation. They're starting rotation. Blue Jays, I do not see right now what they are doing. I just can't see it. I'm just not getting a lot of news on that part. But again, it is what that can turn out to be. Uh, they really need starting pitching. Their bullpen needs to be more depth. And to really look at things, you know, if they could somehow re-sign my Marcus Simeon, that would be a great start there. Because the guy was an absolute bomber of, you know, a guy who can launch those long balls. And Uh, when I look at, you know, other aspects, like in the NBA right now, it's too early to say anything um, on the forefront of any team really struggling. Unless it's like teams that you know that are going to struggle, that are struggling. See, this is why I don't really take much offense when talking about sports. Because like right now you got the NFL, you got the NHL, you got the NHL where you got teams that are losing that should be losing, and you got teams in the NFL that are surprisingly struggling now in the second half. And guess what? That's part of the, the biz. That's part of it. Like seriously, if I have to go back a few years ago to look at, say, Seattle, uh, St. Louis winning the Stanley Cup. And at that point, at the first half of the season, they literally were in the worst position possible. Not even making the playoffs.
class and probably get in the top round, you know, first round overall pick. And they got, you know, they got like the second round, second half of the season, they got into this like complete monster mode of, you know, stopping pucks and scoring goals and working as a team and got themselves out of like a complete, utter, destined slump. And that's really where the first half of the season, I understand, teams should start banking points. Even if that's overtime and shootout points, bank those one points because they are going to be worth money come playoff time. Coming to the playoffs, making the playoffs. But again, you can't always bank on all of this. This is where the real struggle begins. Because sometimes getting the two points is a little more than just getting the one point. It is uh, going to be a dogfight in the NFL, I know that, come for the playoffs positioning and home field advantage and all that. I understand that. It is uh, just, a, it's going to be a very brutal fight on that end. Can't say much more to that. But, uh, just recording my episode. So I will have this up later today. Um, just, you know, you guys have a great Tuesday. I'll be back on Wednesday with the uh, Wednesday Hump Day, Woman Crush Wednesday edition. Yes, and I will talk to you guys all later because I have to pull something out of my car now. Like usual, I'm always doing stuff and that's how I live life.